Hey, it's Andrew from Fly. So I keep getting some questions from people that the question itself kind of reveals that there's a general misunderstanding of how HTTP, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, how it all works. And uh, like, for example, one of the questions I got was, what should I do my website in, JavaScript or Java? And they're just totally different. And it's, it's uh, revealing that, you know, a lot of people probably don't understand exactly how this all works. So part one of this series is let me just explain very simply, what is HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and how does it work with HTTP? And we'll stop there. And then from there, we can do a part two and explain all the other complicated stuff. So without further ado, let's talk about HTML. All right, this is as simple as you can get. I just opened up a text editor and I typed these few lines and this is HTML, as basic as you can possibly be. It starts with a little HTML tag at the top and then we put a title, how it all works. H1 stands for header one, means a nice big header. And it says, Andrew from Fly says, dot, dot, dot. And then the P tag stands for paragraph. So we're gonna put a little paragraph there. And I had to put in some branding. I had to mention Muzak. I said, visit Muzak, it's lots of fun. And then I end the paragraph and that's it. End body and HTML, simple, simple HTML. And I took that file and I saved it to my hard drive and I called it example.html. So if you're following along uh, in, and you're on Windows, open up Notepad, type all that in, see a file save, example.html. All right, and I opened up the file just by double clicking on it. Or if you're in your browser, you can go to the file menu and say open and select that file. Select the file you just saved, example.html. And you'll notice in the browser menu, see how it says file colon slash slash. And if you're on a Windows machine, you might see you know the C drive there. I'm on a Mac, so it says users. So that looks very different than a normal website, right? A normal website will say HTTP, HTTP colon slash slash. And that stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol which is needed if you're going to send HTML over the internet. But that's not what we're doing here, right? We save that file locally to our hard drive and it's just a file. So we're not using HTTP. There's still HTML involved because HTML is just what the browser understands of how to render what the page looks like, but it doesn't need to be sent anywhere. In fact, you could have done this even without an internet connection. In fact, you know, if you don't believe me, try it. Unplug your network cable from your you know, DSL, your cable modem and open up this file just locally without any internet connection because you're not using the internet. This is just local to your machine. And that's a huge point to understand because when you understand what a web server does, all it does is serve up these files, serve up HTML with other stuff inside of it. Uh, and it gets more complicated there, of course, but just uh, understand the idea that, you know, this file is coming locally from your computer and it is not going across the internet. But yet we can still play around with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And we're gonna do that in a second all without using the internet. So let's look at the next step. All right, here I've gone ahead and added some CSS. And if you're doing lots of CSS, you wouldn't put it in the same file as the HTML. You'd have a separate file for it. But just for this example, just to show how it works, you notice I expanded that paragraph tag. And now there's something there that says style equals, background color blue, color white, font weight bold. And so I'm just playing around with some aesthetic aspects of how you can change the text around. And that's what CSS is. Um, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets, and it's all about style. It's all about, you know, changing the colors, changing the font. And if I go back to the browser and I hit refresh, or, you know, I open the file again, you'll see that our CSS changes are now visible. We have the Visit Muzak. It's lots of fun in bold, white, on a blue background. All right, so I've gone back and I've now added some very simple JavaScript uh, just to demonstrate that just like HTML and CSS, JavaScript can be part of the HTML file, and it's just served up from a web server, you don't necessarily need to be connected to the internet, it's all just part of the browser. And to do that example here, I've made a little uh, link that says change color. And uh, if you're familiar with HTML, the way you do links are with these anchor tags, an A tag, and then you normally specify a place for it to go. In this case, I've just put the number sign there as a placeholder because I don't actually want it to go anywhere. I want it to use JavaScript. And I'm using the onClick method, and I'm saying do JavaScript example. And if you notice down below, I've kind of defined that example. There's a little script tag that says JavaScript is the language. And then there's a function that says do JavaScript example. And all I'm doing in that function is I'm saying document get element by ID P1. And P1 refers to that paragraph. If you look up above, you notice I added an ID tag to that paragraph. So that paragraph is now identified by P1. And I'm saying change its style, change the background color to red. And so if you actually run this and you click that change color button, you'll see that the blue background now changes to red. And so the important thing to get from all of this is that all of this functionality, everything we did 
can be done locally and does not involve anything other than HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And all of that, the browser knows how to interpret. The browser itself knows how to handle all that code. And you notice that we never talked at all in this entire example about PHP, about Ruby, about Java, about databases, about SQL. All of that stuff is a means to an end. It's a means to an end to dynamically generate the stuff we just did. So this example is pretty boring because it's always the same. All it's going to do is display this file, click that, it's going to run the exact same thing. The way you get interesting is if that HTML, that CSS, that JavaScript, if it gets dynamically generated, so it changes depending upon what the user enters or where you go or what you do. And so that's the key. That's, that's what we do at Fly Publishing is we generate HTML on the fly. And so in the next part of this video, after you, you know, watch this one first, obviously, to understand the basic concepts, now we can talk about what Java does and what Ruby does and what PHP does and what Perl does and what Python does and what every other language under the sun. They all do the same thing. They're all just a means to an end to generate HTML, to generate CSS, to generate JavaScript. So I, I guess I'm being kind of repetitive, but that's the important point to understand. Um, appreciate your feedback on this video. Let me know if this made sense. This is Andrew from Fly.